In this video, we're going to be discussing one of the special tests used in the assessment of lumbar radiculopathies, and that is the straight leg raise test. Now, jumping way ahead down here to the psychometrics, notice that the sensitivity of the straight leg raise test is all the way up at 92%, but the specificity is extremely low. That being said, the straight leg raise test is better used to rule down a lumbar radiculopathy if it's negative. Okay? You really should not use this test to rule up the condition if it's positive because the specificity is terrible. So this is good at ruling out a lumbar radiculopathy. Later on, we're going to be looking at a similar special test called the crossed straight leg raise test. And you'll notice down here that the psychometrics are essentially flipped. It has a very poor sensitivity at 28%, but the specificity is excellent all the way up at 90%. So bottom line, the cross straight leg raise test is excellent for ruling up a lumbar radiculopathy if it's positive. But this one, the straight leg raise, is excellent for ruling down a lumbar radiculopathy if it's negative. So generally speaking, this is the first special test you're gonna use with the attempt to rule down the radiculopathy. So, to perform the straight leg raise test, the patient will be positioned in supine, as you see right here, and with the test side knee, that is the right knee, in the fully extended position, we're going to passively elevate that lower extremity, the right lower extremity, up until the point where familiar pain and or symptoms are reproduced. Okay. So we take the right lower extremity and we elevate it up with a straight knee. Now, this may very well not reproduce any pain or other symptoms. However, if it does, we need to be sure to ask the patient about their location and their nature because a positive straight leg raise test depends on the type of response and the location of the pain. A lot of times patients will experience posterior thigh pain or discomfort, and oftentimes this is simply hamstring tightness. If it is hamstring tightness, that posterior thigh pain should feel more like a strong stretch of that musculature, and it should also be eased by holding a position of hip flexion, so maintaining this angle at the right hip, but allowing the knee to passively flex down, which relieves some of the stretch on the hamstring muscles. Okay? If the patient complains of localized low back pain with no radicular symptoms going into either lower extremity, that suggests a local problem to the lumbar spine, such as a central disc protrusion that's possibly compressing the anterior theca of the spinal cord. Again, it's compressing the anterior theca, not the spinal cord itself, because if you had something compressed in the spinal cord, you would have myelopathic symptoms, right? This is just compressing the anterior theca, which can certainly be a pain generator. But the reason why you wouldn't have radicular symptoms in that case is because this is a central disc protrusion. To compress the nerve roots would cause radicular symptoms, and that would require most likely a posterolateral disc protrusion. This is central. Okay? That being said, the patient could also report radicular symptoms, which include numbness, tingling, and radicular pain, which is burning, shooting pain. And more importantly, those radicular symptoms would have to be in the test side, lower extremity, in other words, the right side here, in order to constitute a positive straight leg raise test. Okay? If they were in this leg, the left side, that would be suggestive of something else that we'll talk about in another video. Okay? So for the straight leg raise test, they have to be in the test side, lower extremity, and that would implicate a lumbar radiculopathy. Now, the psychometrics of the straight leg raise test were assessed by Vanderwint et al. in 2010 for a lumbar radiculopathy. Okay? And they found a sensitivity of 92% and a specificity of 28%. As we mentioned at the start of the video, the straight leg raise test should never be used to rule up a lumbar radiculopathy. That's saved for the cross straight leg raise test, which has a 90% specificity. This one has a 92% sensitivity. So in other words, if this test is negative, there's a 92% chance that the patient does not have a lumbar radiculopathy. So if you're looking for a quick screening special test to rule out a lumbar radiculopathy, it is the straight leg raise test. If this test does not come back negative, in other words, it comes out positive for radicular symptoms, 
Then you need to examine a lumbar radiculopathy further, and your next test should be the crossed straight leg raise test, which we'll be discussing in a couple of videos. The only other thing to cover here is the hip flexion angle, which is the angle of the hip when we're doing the test where the patient begins experiencing pain. And depending on where they experience pain, that angle can tell us a little bit about the potential pathology. So we begin elevating the patient's leg, and maybe we're right around there where the patient begins experiencing pain. So we're talking first at an angle less than 30 degrees. If the patient began experiencing pain here, this could indicate an acute spondylolisthesis, a gluteal abscess, a disc protrusion or extrusion if it was severe enough, a tumor of the buttock, acute dural inflammation, a malingering patient, or it's a sign of the buttock. Very rarely though will you actually have the patient experience pain at this angle. Okay? If it was a disc protrusion or extrusion, it would have to be a very severe one to experience pain at less than 30 degrees. Next, we're gonna jump up at an angle between 30 and 70. Okay, so we bring the angle up more and more. There's about 45. That's probably about 50 degrees right there. If the patient experiences pain or other symptoms in this range right here, this is more consistent with a lumbar radiculopathy, in particular affecting the L4 through S1 nerve root levels. It turns out the straight leg raise test is not as effective at detecting radiculopathies of the L2 and L3 levels. That's actually saved for the femoral nerve tension test. That's better at detecting the mid-lumbar radiculopathies. But for radiculopathies from L4 down, that's a straight leg raise test. And you would expect the pain to be experienced in this range right here. Okay. Once we get beyond that, so 70 degrees and above, now we're thinking SI joint pain or hamstring or gluteus maximus tightness or a pathology of the hip capsule. Okay. The point is, if the patient does have a lumbar radiculopathy, more than likely the pain is going to be felt in this range between 30 and 70 degrees. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.